Good morning, good morning, good morning, good morning, good morning. It is good for us to be here this morning. We thank God for all of his many blessings. We pray that we made it through Thanksgiving unscathed. We, we, we are thankful to God for all of his many, many blessings that he has given to us. We thank him because he has brought us all of the way and, and, and it's it's just good for us to be here. We, we, we pray that we kind of uh, took the advice of the CDC and, and just wasn't as heavily populated a gathering as we did. We, we did, uh, uh, first of all, we did Zoom with prayer and then we, we prayed. And so we, we, we just, it was just good for us to see, even though we weren't there in the physical body, we saw each other through Zoom. And we thank God for, for that. This morning, we're going to continue. This is our last study of the theme of commitment. And as we look at commitment, it, it, it see that well, we see that commitment is very, very, very important to the life of a believer because of the fact that when you commit to Christ, you are to commit, well, you are committed completely, not partially. You are committed completely to the will and the way of God. And our, our title is Committed to, to His Mission. Committed to His Mission. What, well, what is His Mission? Proverbs 11 and 30. It, it gives us the, com, the, the, the commitment of our mission. And it says, The fruit of the righteous is a tree of life. And he who wins souls is wise. Our mission is to get the gospel out to save those who are lost. That is our mission. And we must be committed to the mission. And it comes to us from Romans chapter 10, verses 9 through 17. And you, you, this is a very familiar passage because of the fact when revivals usually began, this is the passage that's used for the revival. And so as we look at listen to the point. The point says, God's desires for all people is to hear and respond to the gospel. Therefore, we must spread the gospel everywhere we go. We spread the gospel everywhere we go. Tell a dying soul about a living Savior who could save Anybody, you, it, no matter who you are, what you have done, we have a savior that is ready to save us all. Our first outline, our first outline deals with, it says the message of salvation is summed up in confession and belief in Christ. Listen, listen to what it says. Uh, Romans chapter 10, verses nine and 10. It says, if you confess with your mouth, Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, the Bible says you are saved. One believes with the heart resulting in righteousness, and one confesses with the mouth, resulting in salvation. So 
the whole premise of the gospel is that we must confess that Jesus is Lord. We must open our mouth. We can't nod our head. We can't say, mm -mm. We, we have to open our mouth and make it known that Jesus is Lord. And as we see that Jesus is Lord, uh, one believes with the heart. You believe. When you believe that Jesus is the Son of God, that's resulted in righteousness, right relationship with him. And then it talks about confesses with the mouth, results in salvation. The only way you can be saved is through accepting Jesus as Lord by opening your mouth and say that you believe that Jesus is Lord. Here are some resulting, some, some lasting truths from these two verses. First of all, it says, first of all, it says, the gospel calls us to confess Jesus as Lord in our life. You got to say it with your mouth. Secondly, the resurrection of Jesus is the central of our salvation, believing that he rose from the dead. And then thirdly, salvation is both personal and a public event. So, so then we, we must, we must speak it with our mouth. We must say it. The message of salvation is summed up in confession and belief in Christ. The second outline it says from verses 10 through 13, chapter 10, verse 11 through 13, it says, for the scripture says, everyone who believes on him will not be put to shame since there is no distinction between Jew and Greek because the same Lord of all richly blesses all calls on him. For everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. So, so what is this? The message of salvation is for everybody. It doesn't matter who you are. If you call on the name of the Lord, if you believe with your mouth that Jesus is the Son of God and he died for your sin, the Bible says that you are saved. The message of salvation is not for a selective few. The gospel is for everybody, everybody. No matter what color you are, what swear you are, poor, rich, it doesn't matter. The gospel is for everybody. And it says everyone who believes on him will not be put to shame. It doesn't matter. No matter what side of the track you came from, you 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 still you you still uh, uh, the gospel is for you too, and 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 it says no distinction, ain't, ain't no you ain't prejudiced, but but for some reason or another within the body, uh, uh, prejudiceness have has taken over, and so it's so important we must come together as believers in Christ, that we will be the same. Some lasting truths. Here are some lasting truths. No one who believes on Jesus will be put to shame. Nobody. Again, they don't care. It doesn't matter where you, what side of the track you came from. Nobody will be put to shame. Secondly, the Lord is ready to welcome both Jews and Gentiles and to his family, the matter where you came from, what color you are, what side the track you came from, it doesn't matter. If you believe that Jesus is the Son of God, He said that this gospel is for you. And thirdly, everyone who calls on Jesus' name will experience salvation. So it's very, very important that we as believers model 
what this word is saying. We, we, we must model it. We can't, we, we can't be living double lives. We must model what we are talking about. And then thirdly, thirdly, uh, Romans 10, 14 through 17, it says, how then can they call on him they have not believed in? How can they believe without hearing about him? How can they hear without a preacher? And how can they preach unless they are sent? As it is written, how beautiful are the feet of those who bear good news, but not all obey the gospel. For Isaiah says, Lord, who has believed our message? So faith comes from hearing what hear what is heard, and what is heard comes from comes through the message about Christ. So then, right here, we are to share the message of salvation. We are responsible for the, getting the word out. It doesn't matter if you just a member, if you are an office holder. Everybody is responsible for helping getting this gospel out and getting people saved. It is for everybody. Everybody is to minister to people. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter where you come from. Listen, some lasting truths. Here's some lasting truths. It says, People need to hear and understand the gospel before they can believe it and receive it. It's just like peppermint. I can eat all the peppermint I want, and I can tell you that it is good. But until you taste the peppermint, then you're gonna, then you're not gonna know how good it is. The same way with salvation. Unless you experience it yourself, then that's how you're going to know how good it is. Secondly, people need to share the message of Christ so others can hear it and receive it. We need to share the gospel with other people. Thirdly, the gospel has the power to change lives and to change the world. So we are responsible for getting the word out. We must live by example. And as we live by example, then people will see what is going on within this gospel. So then it's important for us to keep in mind as we share the good news of the gospel with, with others. We must be the example. Let's pray. Father, we come now in the name of your son, Jesus, thanking you for this day. We thank you, O God, for allowing us to assemble ourselves here in your sight and in your presence. We thank you, dear God, for, for being who you are. We ask that you forgive us of our sins and create in us a clean heart and renew the right spirit within us. Lord, we, we thank you. We, we lift up those who are sick among us. We ask that you comfort those who lost loved ones. We pray now that as we go down from this place, that you will be glorified in all that is done. Lord, we just love you and we praise you. We lift up this nation. We lift up this state. We lift up this city to you. We pray that you will lead our leaders, that we will be led by you. And Lord, we just thank you. And we praise you. It is in Jesus' name that we do pray. Amen. If you haven't gotten your Sunday school book, come by Sunday and pick your Sunday school book up. May God richly bless you, my beloved.